Hey everybody, Don Mammos are here. Thanks for coming along with me. Today we're going to take Sony's A6600 camera body and we're going to pair it with the 200-600 lens and I'm going to give you five really easy tips to maximize your sharpness out of this lens and camera combination. Now we're going to go all around the Denver, Colorado area in all different seasons and I'm going to show you numerous examples of photos that I got with this combination. Then I may zoom in and show you 100% crops and sometimes 200% crops as well so you can really see the detail with this combination of camera and lens. And so the first place we'll go for our real world test of the A6600 and the 200-600 Sony lens is a grassland park. And this is the type of place where you drive around in your vehicle and you look for wildlife you don't get out of your vehicle and so you're using your vehicle as a blind and the animals are pretty tolerant to that. So I came across this small whitetail here and I like this image because he was eating uh, some grasses and here's a 100% crop of that and then 200% so you can see the sharpness. And I didn't think that was the best body angle though for that deer and so I moved my car just a tiny bit more just about 10 feet or so to get a different body angle and it's the same deer here. Here's the 100% crop and then the 200% crop. And my tip here for this section is to turn off your vehicle when you're using it as a blind. I know that it seems like an obvious tip, but just the uh, vehicle shaking from the motor running is enough to blur your images. So even if you only move the vehicle 10 feet from the last time you photographed, you should turn it off and nestle your beanbag on the door sill and photograph like that. So I came across another deer another day. This was a bigger white tail. Beautiful one. Here we'll zoom in at 100% and then 200%. Also there was a song sparrow standing on a stalk. So here's the original as I took it. And then this is how I would crop it if I was going to use it for my website or something like that. And then just so you can see the sharpness, here's at 100% and then 200%. Now I did get out of my car for a couple shots, uh, namely this tiger swallowtail butterfly. And this is the original that I got and then I would crop it to get rid of some of those flowers over there on the right hand side, make it more pleasing. And then just so you can see sharpness again, here's at 100% crop and then 200%. And lastly at this park, look at this massive mule deer that I happened across one day while I was using the vehicle as a blind. Here's the shot, I don't think it needs any cropping, but just so you can see the detail, here's the 100% and the 200%. It's breaking down a little bit at 200%. As I said, if you zoom in far enough on any image, eventually it'll fall apart, but this one holds up fairly well. Next we'll visit a lakeside park and there were wading birds and songbirds here at this park. And here's the first image that I got. Great blue heron bringing some nesting material back to its mate. And we'll zoom in at 100% and then a 200% zoom so you can see the detail. And my tip here for this area is to turn your OSS off if you've got a fast shutter speed of about a two thousandth of a second or better, I find that the pictures will actually be sharper without the OSS when you get those fast shutter speeds. And of course at this park there's lots of other things besides great blue herons. One day there was a bunch of bluebirds coming through the area, so here's the original of one of those. And then I would crop it into this. And so you can see the detail, here's the 100% crop and the 200% crop. So for these I left the OSS on because my shutter speed was slower. And there was also a cedar waxwing amongst the bluebirds. Here's that original and here's the cropped image how I would use it. Not much difference there. And then the 100% to show the detail and the 200%. Alright and back to the, some blue herons that were flying and I had fast shutter speeds for those. Here's one bringing some nesting material and here's how I would crop that then the 100% crop and the 200% crop so you can see how the image holds up. 
My third place for testing out this lens and camera combo was at a wildlife refuge and I managed to find some burrowing owls out there and mostly it was the male who would sit by the burrow. Here's a crop of how I would use that image and then we'll get in tighter so you can see how it holds up and here's at 200 percent. And that burrowing owl once in a while would do weird things. Here he is at the burrow and he was picking up these dirt clods. I don't know what he was doing with them. He wasn't moving them. He would just hold them in his in his beak for a little while. And here's the 100% crop. And then the 200% crops. So you can see the detail. And he would go off hunting and he would sit on stalks looking for insects. Again, here's the image. And then here's how I would crop it for use. And we'll go in tighter so you can see how the detail is. And once in a while, the female would come out of the burrow and they would go together and they would do some affection and they would do little kisses and things like that. So my tip here for this section is you probably received the 95 millimeter filter, a UV filter, when you purchased your 200 to 600. Mine just came with it or the camera store maybe sold you one. And my tip is to not use that. Those degrade images and it's just one more piece of glass that you have to shoot through. And so I recommend you don't use it at all. But also at this refuge, there's lots and lots of prairie dogs. So here's one just sitting by the burrow. And here it is nice and close up so you can see the detail. And we'll go in closer still. Next, we'll go to a suburban lake park. And my tip here is to use your tripod whenever you can. Of course, a tripod is the number one way to get sharper images. So take a look at this northern shoveler on the water. Yes, I had to get the tripod low, but it's a nice sharp shot because I was using the tripod. And I turn my OSS off whenever I'm on the tripod. Here we go in a little bit tighter so you can see how great the sharpness is. And we're going even tighter. Now that was a male and here was the female sitting in on the water right next to the male and we'll go in a little tighter and to 200 percent so you can just see what type of sharpness you can get when you're using a tripod. So there's lots of other things at this lakeside park as well. Here's a fox squirrel and we'll go in very tight and even tighter and you can really see the detail that you can get. And in the winter, sometimes there's rabbits there. Here's a cottontail rabbit. And if we go in to 100% and then 200%, you can see that the quality is still there. So using a tripod will always make your images sharper. And finally, to check out this lens and camera combination, we'll just go around my neighborhood park right here where I live in the Denver area. And I came across this American goldfinch sitting on a mullen stalk. Here's the original. Here's how I would crop it to make it a little bit bigger in the frame. And then so you can see the sharpness again. We'll go in at 100% and then 200%. Here's an American robin in the same area. Here's the original. I don't think it needs any cropping. It's big enough in the frame. But we'll go in at 100% and then 200% so you can see how it holds up even when we're zoomed in that far. And my tip here is for static birds to double check the focus manually. And the way that you double check focus manually when you're on a tripod with a static subject, pull the information up here on my monitor so you can see, and as I press the back button focus, you can see that the camera kind of wants to grab the back or the wings of the bird and I want to make sure the eye is sharp. So I press and hold my AFMF hold button which is the center of the control wheel here and then when I spin the lens barrel focus you can see that it brings up an enlarged view and I recompose a little bit to the eye to double check for critical focus there. Then as soon as I let go of that AFMF hold button, it goes back to autofocus, but I can recompose and as long as the bird doesn't move and I don't press my back button focus, it'll maintain that same focus that I had when I was manually focused to check for critical sharpness. 
and then of course you can fire off your shots. And the way I set up that AF MF control hold is through the menus. We go to chapter number two, page number eight. You can see what page I'm on here. That's the custom key area. I select that and then I go to page two of this area and you can see that the center of my control wheel is set up to do an AF MF control hold as I just demonstrated. But you can change that to do anything you want by selecting it and then you have 24 pages of choices what you could choose there. I like to have mine as I said on the AF MF control hold. Okay so here's a perfect example where the bird wasn't moving very much and I was able to double check the focus manually while I was on a tripod. Here it is. It's a red winged blackbird and here's a hundred percent crop on that and then two hundred percent. But that's not the nicest image of a red winged blackbird. I like it when they're singing a little bit better. So here's one of those and then how I would crop it. And the last image here that I want to show is a barn swallow sitting on a branch. Here's the original. This is how I cropped it to get rid of a couple of distracting elements there on the left hand side. And then we'll go in very close and even closer still so you can see that this camera lens combination really does maintain its sharpness. All right. Thank you for coming along. You can see that my tips are very simple things that you can do to maximize sharpness, but hopefully you saw that this combination of the 6600 plus the 200 to 600 is just fantastic. You can really get some sharp images. And of course, proper technique is one thing. And then being in the right place at the right time with wildlife, of course, is the other thing. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching my videos. You can subscribe, you can click that like button, and you can share these videos. I appreciate it very much. Thanks again and hope to see you soon.